My name is Mark Belobordov. I'm the member of the firm here in Bond, Sean and King uh, at the IP group. Um, so I've just given a brief talk about recent IP cases pending before the Supreme Court. Just wanted to follow up. Uh, it's a very interesting topic. As many of you are aware, Supreme Court does not take many cases and they don't take IP cases all that often. And um, the cases that are currently in front of the court are um, particularly interesting because um, last time the court addressed uh, copyright and specifically fair use doctrine in, in art settings and copyright cases was you know, almost 30 years ago. And the other case talking about enablement um, was only addressed once in the history of patent act by the Supreme Court. And that was uh, many, many, many years, almost 50 years ago. So the, the first case, uh, Andy Warhol um, uh, case is revisiting um, the fair use doctrine in copyright law. And what's interesting about this case is uh, the impact it may have potentially on the world of you know, creativity. This case tests the boundary at which a new work, new artwork created by um, a subsequent creator transforms an old work by the original artist enough to constitute fair use rather than stepping on uh, derivative rights of um, the copyright owner. As such, this case is likely to have major impact uh, for uh, copyright law and the you know, creativity um, world um, for years to come. And the question presented um, and Supreme Court is now reviewing is, whether a work is transformative when it conveys a different meaning or message from its source material, or whether court is forbidden from considering the meaning of the accused work when it is recognizably um, derived from the source material. Of course, at issue in this case was a famous artwork by Andy Warhol based on a photograph taken of prints um, by uh, Lynn uh, Goldstein, a famous photographer. The other case uh, I covered very briefly, and it was just taken up by the Supreme Court uh, earlier in November. It, it goes to the heart of enablement, which is of course part of the quid pro quo bargain of the US patent system when the inventors receive then limited monopoly on their invention uh, in exchange for enabling description uh, of their invention, explaining how, how to make and use it. So um, the boundaries or the extent of how much description is sufficient to describe, support, enable uh, the claim invention um, was not considered for for very very long time by the Supreme Court. Now they picked it up in the context of a biotech uh, invention and a dispute between Amgen and Sanofi. And so this case has a potential to change how much information inventors need to provide in their patent applications to comply with the enablement requirement and the end of the quid pro quo bargain. Um, it's also possible that the Supreme Court will take a narrow view of this case and um, kind of the change might be uh, rather limited and relevant to inventions in the biotech industry um, as this case arrived, uh, derived from um, in that context. 